Hey guys, Jay here with 24 Hour Miniatures. I have a quick update video for you. Today, October 8th, Privateer Press released the your Primecast number eight. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about Mark IV that was talked about. So Matt Wilson was in the first segment and talked about the delay to the release of the starter armies and how it was likely going to delay some of the release of the other models. He mentioned specifically the Kador starter box and touched base a little bit on how they're, with that delay, they're adding in some new poses to the existing units for Signar and Orgoth and strengthening some of the weaker components on some of the models like standard bearers and weapons that have had a tendency to break in their test models. They also said that it's likely that the Dusk models, uh, we would see some examples of them soon, but most of the army is still being sculpted. Then they brought up the uh, Longest Night slash Longest Wait. So for those new and or those haven't been playing Privateer Press for a while, Privateer likes to run an event called the Longest Night, which usually happens around Halloween each year. It's actually the name of the first of the role-playing books that they released way, way back before Mark I. And it sort of represents a Halloween monster theme crazy event that they run every year and because mark four is happening they have didn't have a longest night kit matt was talking to jason souls and they sort of had a, jason made a joke about no oh, what about what if we called it the longest wait and so any store that ordered pre-order kit will be able to contact sherry at privateerpress.com and will be able to get their hands on one of these longest wait kits, which will have a fun scenario and you can run and play in your store with Mark IV. And each kit will come with two of the new Alexia models, one to give to the winner and one to give to one of your painters in the store to paint up a nice model so they can put it in the display case at your shop so people can show off Mark IV. And the new Alexia model will come out later in the year, currently scheduled for December for general sale. So then they move to the next section, which had uh, Jason Souls and Eric, the uh, guys from the dev team, on. And they talked a little bit about how they chose the legacy armies and how they developed the different lists and sort of fleshed out the uh, what was going to be in each of the, the legacy armies. They sort of took the, the two most popular legacy factions from Mark III and sort of tweaked them to make the armies. They said they were shooting for between 25 and 35 models in a given army, and they wanted to include models that when you built lists, so your list would end up being around 25 to 35 models when playing a game. Obviously that probably isn't for like 50 point, that's probably for 75 to 100 point games. And they gave some, some examples of some of the updates that they did they've worked on. For example, for Trenchers First, which is the name of the, uh, the new Trenchers Legacy Army for Mark IV for Signar, Combat Engineers gained in power the Cyclone Heavy Warjack gained Volume Fire, which uh, gives it plus one against medium bases and plus two damage against large bases. Siege 2, who had some movement shenanigan rules in Mark 3, they cleaned up, giving him Repo 3, and for one focus point, he can give himself plus two move in flight, which is a really cool advantage. The Trencher Commandos gained Ambush, and they also tweaked Kray, so he's a little different than Siege 2. He's a, a little little focused on other things and sort of made them have, uh, a, instead of being sort of uh, fast movement shenanigan casters, one, each one sort of has a, a different role. But one of the things they did, they one of the things they did is they gave him uh, pin cushion as one of his special roles. That confirms that Siege 2 and Kray will be in the Trencher uh, army, which is crazy. Corey, if you're listening to this, you lucky bastard. Pardon my language. All right. Some other examples I gave us is that in the new Storm of the North army, all of the war beasts gain dual attacks, specifically beasts that have both melee and ranged attacks. They all gain dual attack. And the stone unit is going to have just a flat plus two arm within eight inches. No more a certain distance for how much fury is on it, or how much guy, how many guys are in the unit. And champs and warders would both are both being moved to eight boxes, which is a pretty pretty strong buff if you ask me. They also mentioned that they've changed a lot of the older legacy infantry units to fill or fit specific roles that they were sort of meant to play. It sounds like that they're they're actually doing some tweaks to the existing existing models to try and strengthen those specific armies to be able to be competitive against the Mark IV stuff, which sounds really cool and interesting to me. I think that that's the biggest thing I I've been worrying about is whether or not the prime armies are going to be able to compare to the strength and the power that the new the Mark IV army seem to seem to have from the, the little bit of info we have in the, the preview Warcaster and Warjacks that we've seen. 
So then Eric was asked the question of, do they have anything else they want to talk about? And he mentioned that when people are sending info about playtesting or feedback suggestions, to go ahead and send it to the feedback email. And he gave some ideas that if you want to submit uh, your group as potential playtesters in the future, some ideas of the kind of information that you should send them. And that the people that send them information that's uh, the more useful instead of just saying, oh, oh, hey, I'd like to be a playtester, will be the people to get the preferential treatment going forward. And so for feedback, just a couple of things they listed is talk about your personal level of experience, your group's level of, of experience, the, how many of you there are and who plays what armies and how, mo how long have you been playing. Then also pick something and give feedback on it. It could be one of the new war jacks that have been previewed. It could be something um, from Mark III that you think could be tweaked in Mark IV. But give strong feedback, give reasonings why, give examples of, of, of why it's too powerful, why it's not powerful enough, and really support your point of view and what you like or dislike about it. And then he also, Eric, encouraged anyone that wants to have them talk about specific things on a future Primecraft episode to send that to the feedback form as well and if they like your topic or they like the discussion or they think that what you brought up or the question you had was important they'll answer it on, on a future uh, primecast so then finally and this isn't mark four news manual class and jeff gum uh, one of Monpok playtesters got together and talked for about the last 20 minutes of the cast about upcoming Monpok stuff and what's going on with Monpok and what to expect in the future for, for Monpok. So if you're a Monpok player, definitely check out that cast. I will link the prank cast at the address for the prank cast episode in the show notes down below. All right, guys, this was Jay. Thank you very much. I'll be doing more of this kind of stuff in the future. Check out, so coming this week, I'll have my first series on the first three armies for Mark IV. And they're going to be released with the beta and what I think is going to be in those armies and why. I should That article should be out on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week, this coming week. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening, and I'll catch you all later. This has been Jay for 24-Hour Miniatures. Have a good night. 